<laughs> I decided to whip together some twice baked potatoes. I've baked several, and I mean several, potatoes in the oven. But before I put them in the oven, I rubbed the skins with canola oil. And that just helps them hold together a little better and makes them a little prettier at the end. Then I halved them, let them cool just for a few minutes, and I'm scooping out the shells. I leave a little bit of a border just to give them some support. Then I'm going to have this huge bowl of potato, and that's where all the good stuff's going to go. Now I'm in here getting ready for the food part. My husband's outside getting ready for everything else. Why don't you all start filling that one up, and I'll do this one. We're going to need a lot of ice when we get done with this so we can make sure everything's really cold. Let's get some ice and we can, then we can put a few more in. One of the things I love adding to my twice baked potatoes is thick cut bacon. So all this bacon is going to distribute nicely. It won't be excessive, I promise. Well, it won't be too excessive anyway. I'm adding six sticks of butter to these potatoes. Now, I did a little math and I baked 24 potatoes. That translates to 48 potato halves and I'm adding 48 tablespoons of butter to the potatoes. So each potato half will only wind up with one tablespoon of butter. So if you think of it that way, it won't seem so overwhelming. And I'm gonna put the bacon on top of it to hide the evidence. All right, six total cups of shredded cheese. I'm gonna save three cups for the finished potatoes. And I'll add three cups now. I'm gonna add a cup and a half of milk. And this'll just make the potatoes nice and moist and soft. And then shield your eyes again, sour cream. Fortunately, I'm not easily shocked when it comes to ingredients like this. Chopped green onions adds a nice sharpness. Little more salt and pepper, because really, you're having to season a lot of potatoes here. And the potatoes in this area don't come pre-seasoned. And then just a sprinkling of seasoned salt. You can make your own seasoned salt if you want. Things like paprika, onion powder, onion salt, garlic powder, or you can just buy this. Okay, now I've got to mix this together. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, but wish me luck. I'm going in. I think I probably needed a bigger bowl. I'm just gonna fold in the bulk of the ingredients. And now I'll grab the masher. My friend Hyacinth, who's coming to dinner tonight, always digs in and mixes her twice baked potatoes with her hands. I thought I'd spare myself the agony. Okay, I finally got it mixed together. All right, I've got the shells ready to go. They really held their shape nicely. And then I just scoop the filling into each shell. Because I added so many ingredients to the potatoes, I'll wind up with way more filling than I need. One reason twice baked potatoes are so perfect for parties, aside from the fact that they're totally delicious, is that you can make them way in advance. You can make them early in the day, stick them in the fridge, and then when the guests arrive, just pop them in the oven. I've made them the day before, too, and it saves a lot of time on party day. Almost got all the potato halves filled. This is very strenuous work. Fortunately, I've been taking little tastes of the potato mixture all along. It has sustained me. Yeah, I thought I'd have a lot of extra filling, but it appears I've eaten it all. Okay, I've got the rest of this shredded cheese. And before I put these in the fridge, I'm just gonna sprinkle the tops. Last I checked, the kids were supposed to be icing down the drinks. So I'm gonna stick these in the fridge and go see if they're doing their work. I'm gonna stick the potatoes in the oven, get them nice and warm. 